Hi guys, it's Wayne from Wayne Government Photography here again. So I'm back at Pennington Flash, which is a lovely part of the north of England, and I've got two lenses to test today. A few weeks ago I did uh, the 7200 uh, test with Canon. It's an f2.8 lens and it's the version 1. I've now also today got the version 2 with me, so we're going to do a comparison and we're going to see how they compare in terms of autofocus, image quality. There are definitely differences between the two apparently, but I'm yet to find that out and that's why I'm here today. Okay, so for this video, I'm now going to compare the autofocusing capability uh, of the version 1 versus version 2 of the Canon 7200 range, uh, the f2.8 models. We've got version 1, version 2, both with image stabilization, um, both set to the correct focusing distances on the lens. Um, basically, uh, we'll see how they are between them. So if you watch this window here, that's the, the focus distance window. Uh, we have infinity there at the far end, obviously, and the closest here is 1.4 meters uh, versus 1.2 meters of the newer lens, which we'll test shortly. Um, so we'll put it right to the, the minimum focus distance. I've got it set on a window frame which has uh, something hanging in front of it, which so that gives us the contrast area, um, which you know will allow us to focus. And that's around about, I'd say, two meters from the, the front of the lens. Um, so more than enough compared to you know the actual minimal uh, focus distance of this lens. You know it's perfect for testing. Uh, so we'll give that a go. So I'm going to hit the shutter in three, two, one. Okay. So this is all at 70 millimeters. I should add. Um, so I was actually I'm actually quite impressed with that. Um, if we put that through to infinity, three, two, one. A lot of hunting there, you can hear it, you can see the, the window moving in and out, but overall not a bad job at all at 70 millimeters. If we move that now to about 135 millimeters, closest focusing distance in three, two, one. Not a chance, just hunting all the time. Put it to infinity and it's three, two, one, fine, catches it no problem. So I guess as long as you're not moving too much between subjects, you know, that, that would still be usable. Let's go all the way to 200. So closest focus distance set, three, two, one. And again, as we would expect, if it's not gonna do it 135, it's probably not gonna do it 200 it's even less likely <laughs> yeah, and it's just clearly not performing. All the way to infinity now at 200 millimeters, three, two, one. It actually thinks it's got focus there, but it's, uh, so it stopped even trying to hunt. Three, two, one, try again. And again, just hunting. And this is the second version of the 7200. So the version two IS USM. And at the minute I've got it at closest focusing distance of 1.2 meters. And we're focused on the same subject of the window frame with detail to it to give contrast. And I'm gonna hit the shutter button of three, two, one. So you can see there about a second and a half, I'd say something like that to achieve focus from its closest focusing to something. Um, if we move that to furthest closest, uh, sorry, furthest distance, uh, that's now an infinity. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, so actually a little bit quicker, I think. There's not, there wasn't quite as much hunting. That's all at 70 millimeters uh, in focal length. Put it to around about 135, and we'll go closest focusing distance. Three, two, one. And Furthest focusing distance, infinity, three, two, one. And now fully up to 200 millimeters. Closest focusing distance, three, two, one. Sorry, actually uh, started counting before I pushed it there. And it's actually struggling at the minute. Let's do that again. So three, two, one. That's not actually achieving focus at all. Uh, now, I tried this before and it was okay, so um, again, 
what we're seeing is temperamental, a temperamental side to all this equipment. Um, let's put it to furthest distance. Infinity, three, two, one. And it achieves it. Closest we'll do again. Three, two, one. Yeah, absolutely no chance of that achieving this uh, focus at all. Um, so there you can see, you know, at the end of the day, um, this is an adapted lens. It's on a Metabones adapter on an A7R2 made by a company different to the lens. We can't expect it to be absolutely perfect. Um, but I think temperamental is definitely a word that I keep using. And there's a reason for that because we're getting intermittent results. So one of the things I obviously wanted to compare between the two lenses was the quality uh, that you're going to get out of them. Um, those things being such as, all right, so we've done autofocus, but we want to know obviously what the image quality is like, how the colors render, uh, the bokeh, so the, the background blur basically, and see, you know, see how the, the two lenses perform side by side. And obviously one way you can do that these days is to look at the two files in Lightroom and compare them. So that's what I've done. So I'm at f2.8 here. We've got on the left hand side, we've got the version one of the Canon lens. And on the right hand side, we have version two. Um, basically, I stood my camera on a tripod and focused on the same point, which was this beam here, this wooden beam. Um, as you can see, I, I must have knocked it in between because there is a slight difference, but honestly, it's so minimal, it's not going to make any difference to these results. Um, these will give us a very clear and concise idea of of how the two lenses perform side by side. So first thing we'll look at is sharpness, um, which is what a lot of people look at these days. And we can see if I just zoom in here, instantly there's a massive difference in sharpness between the two lenses. You can see just how undefined that is there, you know, that semicircle in the wood compared to this where you can actually see the, the real sort of difference between the two uh, parts of the wood structure there. So really quite a big difference in sharpness. I was actually amazed how much of a, uh, you know, how wide apart they are really. Um, not that this is a bad performance. I mean, to be honest, I think that's more than adequate in terms of sharpness on the left hand side for the version one lens. For most people, it's absolutely fine. But the right hand side just wins hands down. Um, but what I did notice was, in my opinion, there's a difference in the bokeh and it's probably because of the sharpness of the lens that the bokeh is a little bit more nervous on the version 2 lens, if you look at it, in my opinion, compared to the version 1 lens, which is just a bit softer, a bit creamier as some people say, and um, you know, so maybe maybe it's the softness of that lens in comparison that allows for a sort of slightly nicer background blur and you know but like i say that's my opinion everybody is subjective with this stuff but for me there is a there is a difference there I'll just head uh, down to here as well and what i noticed was where we get sort of a contrasty edge um and you get chromatic aberrations um it's sort of a ready sort of orangey line there. I hope it comes through on the video, but on here it's more Well, it's less defined and I think there's maybe slightly less Aberrations in this image here compared to the right hand side image, but they're both not bad you know um, to say that this one would be bad would be lying because I think it's pretty fantastic to be honest on, on both of these um, again, we see some softness Compared to here, if you look at the two knots in the wood here, that's quite soft and undefined versus this here. I'm sure we could zoom in further, but I'm not going to bother because I never do. You're never going to zoom in more than that. Uh, this is one to one, um, you know, so 100%. That's that's the most I would ever really zoom in personally. Um, and yeah, so the colors also seem a little bit different. This, uh, this image here is slightly cooler. I did have the white balance set to um daylight so 
really they should both be looking the same um, but we get sort of more realistic colors I believe on the right hand side you know that's how I remember it looking more on the right hand side compared to the left it wasn't quite as blue as that which uh, you know is something that maybe needs to be taken into consideration when when looking at these two lenses but overall at f2.8 a very decent performance on both sides and this is at f4 if we just zoom in and this will show us the difference so now we're starting to see some um, sharpness straight away as it is creeping in into uh, the version 1 so we're getting a much better performance there just coming up away from the f2.8 minimum aperture and going to f4 so you don't really have to stop down too much before you start seeing much better results this is at f5.6 just zoom in f8 f11 and finally both are f13 uh, which I'm starting to see what I believe is a bit of diffraction it just looks a bit softer to my eye um, obviously I'm seeing this at full resolution compared to the compressed files on YouTube um, but the you know there's a bit of diffraction here on the, the version 1 whereas the version 2 is still holding up still super sharp um, you know clearly the optics are you know several years more advanced uh, than the version 1 but still version 1 which is why I've owned this lens for a while now it's brilliant it's such a great lens and uh, and the sharpness you know although yes it's not up to the standard of the version 2 you know it's uh, it's still absolutely fantastic especially i think if sometimes uh, sharpness you know on sort of certain subjects can actually be a hindrance so um you know sometimes both of these lenses because of the difference in sharpness between them could actually even run side by side to some degree um but obviously for the most part the version 2 is definitely the winner Okay, so what are my final thoughts on the 70 to 200 test? Well, a bit of a mixed bag, really. Um, I think in terms of adapting a lens like this, which is the version 2 uh, to your Sony, for the most part, you will actually be fine. Uh, it's surprisingly usable, um, but it's not perfect. Uh, for example, the other day when Jeff allowed me to try out his uh, 70 to 200 from Sony, Obviously it's a different lens, it's an f4 lens, um, but there were differences, you know, first of all, just physically, uh, the two Canons are actually very similar, uh, they're both big heavy lenses, um, and they're, I don't know what metal they're made of, but it's really good dense metal, I think if it, you feel if you dropped it, you'd have no issues at all, you might do, but uh, I very much doubt that this would take less of a knot than the Sony because the Sony felt very very lightweight a totally different feel to the lens but that was good because the the Sony lens actually worked very well on the uh, on the a7r2 it balanced really nicely it wasn't too heavy with this you really feel like you've got to you know if you're holding the camera you've got to hold the lens as well in a in a separate sort of fashion um, so you can't have one free definitely not uh, with the 7200 from Sony you can um, but going back to the two Canon lenses, uh, the, the version 1 has more problems than the version 2. If you were just using the version 1 around about 70 millimeters and just beyond, um, if, I don't see why you'd do that, but if you needed to, you could do. It seems to perform fine. You know, no, no issues whatsoever. But as soon as you start getting past those boundaries of where it stops working, you just have no chance of focusing in some circumstances. As you've seen at 200 millimeters, the version one's an absolute nightmare to use. It won't even focus, so you would have to go to manual focus only. And with a lens like this, which is mostly used for sort of sports, uh, obviously you can use it for portraits and things, but at 200 millimeters, you're probably not going to. Um, so yeah, I, I would say version one, unfortunately leave it out uh, which then leaves the version 2 now I haven't been obviously able to compare this to the Sony a mount lenses there are uh, Sony a mount lenses which you can get which are f2.8 
and basically match this in specification and I'm sure it'll perform very well but you need a different adapter which I don't have at the moment and I also haven't been able to get my hands on the lens just yet um, which I would like to do at some point. So um, the conclusions I'm drawing from this are that if you're going to use these absolutely professionally I would look to the Sony native lenses you're going to get a better performance in terms of focusing um, if you are using this as a hobbyist you've got a Canon set up and you want to move over to Sony for whatever reason you have um, yeah then then it makes sense because you know you probably don't need to get that particular shot it's nice to obviously get every shot that you want to but we all expect to miss the odd shot and you would just miss more um, whether you see that as fine or not is totally your choice for me if I didn't want to sort of have to sell the lens buy the Sony lens test this try that you know I think I could put up with the performance of the version 2 uh, Canon lens over the version 1 definitely uh, version 1 I wouldn't keep but the version 2 I would consider seriously keeping but it's not perfect and we saw a lot of videos before the a7R2 came out showing the perfect focusing ability but what no one seemed to really test in my opinion was the different focal lengths you've got 70 to 200 here it's not just one prime lens and they do perform very differently at different focal lengths so that's certainly something to take into account obviously you can go into Lightroom you can have a look at what focal lengths you tend to use and if you find that even with a 7200 in your camera bag you're still only going to about 90 millimeters and never beyond that then the version 1 would be absolutely fine so you know it's very very much down to what you use uh, as a photographer your needs and also more importantly whether it's professionally or just as a as a hobby so i hope this gives you some idea of what i've what i've been finding with the lens um, you know and hopefully the tests help you to make a decision as to what's going to work for you and what isn't going to work for you and i do hope in the future to be able to get hold of this lens again and also compare it to more of the Sony options. So I was hoping to compare this to Jeff's uh, Sony 7200, um, but overall I know in terms of focusing ability, the, the Sony one's gonna work better. Um, it's still not perfect that Sony, it was still, I, I did find it sometimes a little bit slow, um, but it always got focused, no, no issues whatsoever. Whereas this, obviously sometimes we get the hunting if you go from uh, closest focus to uh, to sort of somewhere in between um, so hopefully like I say sometime in the future I'll be able to compare it to some more lenses and we'll we'll give that a go and see what the results are thanks for watching and uh, make sure you comment on the videos I love that and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video and if you're gonna leave a thumbs down I just ask that you please leave a why I've left the thumbs down uh, nobody ever seems to do it but it'd be great to just know you know what you want to see uh, and why you're actually leaving that Thanks and have a great day.